everyone. Welcome to Writing Easy, the podcast that takes the act of writing, which can sometimes be not easy, and tries to make it less not easy. I am one of your hosts, Mary Mascari. And I'm your other host, Melissa Long. Today we're going to talk about good and bad reasons to write. Uh, now, do you ever have that? You have, have you ever had that question? People ask you, like, why do you write? Or you ask yourself that question, why do you write? Why do I write? People ask, oh, well... I mean, sometimes people ask, why do I write? Like, out of mm-hmm. curiosity. Um, but it's a hard thing to answer, because I'm like, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of reasons why I write. Um, I've never uh, I've never been able to answer that question either. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm curious. Like, I mean, I can think of, like, tons and tons of good reasons to write. But mm-hmm. me, like, I'm like, well, what's the bad reasons to write? <laughs> what's the best reason? Is that a is that a good enough reason to write? Right, right. That's the that's the hard one. It's like, is that really a good enough reason to write? And uh, so I, I thought we could delve into that. Is like, is there a good reason? Is there a bad reason? What's a good enough reason? Um, because I think I, I'm I'm just still doing more reading about uh, trying to you know get into flow and trying to work over writer's block. I've been really digging myself out of this hole that I've been in for the last few months of just, you know, getting in my own way. And, and I'm starting to do that. So yay me, 10 points. Um, but one of the things they talk about is like, oh, why do you write? And I was like, uh, well, you know, um, cause. So some of the things I came up with were things like, uh, because I think it's fun, yeah. which is sometimes hard to say, because sometimes it's not fun. So like, okay, well, is that really valid? But then there's also, well, I want to be, I want to be published, right? I want to be a successful author. I want to get that attention that I get. And I'm like, well, is that, is that really something that's going to happen? Like, is that going to change my life very much? Usually, probably not, you know? So, so is that worth it? I don't know. So what are you, what, that, those are some of the kind of the myth reasons where I started. Right. I think those are all valid reasons. I am, I'm of the camp that... If, if it's fun, like, that is enough. If you're just, like, yeah. curious, like, that's enough of a reason to sit down at a keyboard, at a laptop, at a typewriter, at a, get a notebook out. Like, all of it is valid. Um, Carve on the wall. Yeah. Okay. Like, Spray maybe. paint on your refrigerator. <laughs> you, whatever if, medium if comes to you. If works for you, poetry <laughs> on your fridge. Yeah, like, whatever whatever works for you uh, to communicate. Because I think writing essentially is communicating and it's processing thoughts and feelings and Mm -hmm. emotions and circumstances and situations. And it's dreaming, right? Like the fantasy Mm, element of it and the fiction element of it. And so I think, I feel like when you're compelled to write, you should just do it. I think what you were expressing is like, what happens when I feel like I should be writing and I don't feel compelled or I'm like stuck then you start hearing these voices of like, well, that's not good enough. Or like, that's not a right. Exactly. Like, you shouldn't start that project because that's not going to go anywhere. And what's the point? Yeah. Oh, you're, only, you're only doing it for your ego. That's yeah. great. <laughs> you know, it occurred to me that I probably did start writing because I wanted to make friends, right? Like I wanted people to like me. So through my writing, I think that's where I started. And mm-hmm. I don't think that's, you know, any huge shocker. Um, you know, the weird kid, uh, who makes up stories and then gets attention for the stories and like, oh, I like that. That's good. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm grown up now. I'm a little past that. And so, yeah, I think I think the honest thing is, is, is it needs to be enjoyable to you. One of the things that I, I was, you know, in my reading and kind of thinking about this is my favorite part is when you make a little discovery. I think you mentioned that earlier like, while you're writing, you know, just a little like, oh, oh, I know. You know, th- those moments where are like, oh, Wait, that'll connect to this. Oh, I get it. Yeah. That, I, that's so much, and it happens every time I sit down and write. There's always something that happens that I go, oh, I didn't think of that. And I, I couldn't think of it while I'm just sort of like cognating on my own, you know, just kind of standing and thinking about the thing. It only happens when, you know, the keys are moving and the words are coming out. And when that happens, then these ideas come. And I just have to remember like how freaking cool that is and how frequently it happens. And I, so that's one of my big things that kind of pulls me back to the keyboard when I'm like, yeah, no, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe I'll play this dumb game again one more time. And I'm uh, like, oh, remember how fun it is when you when you discover something? Yeah, yeah, that is fun. All right, I'm going to go over there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's funny, too, because I am the same way. And in, in then, like, as I sit down and I start writing and those things pop up and you're like, whoa, wasn't, wasn't planning on going there. But that's mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> like, seeing what develops when you actually uh start going through the the characters in the world is fascinating but 
I saw a Twitter thread uh, a few days ago where they were, somebody posted like, why do you write? And the response overwhelmingly was people saying like, because I hear these voices in my head to like, mm. let the characters have life and all of this stuff. And I personally, I don't really hear characters in yeah. my head. Like they're not having conversations. I'm like, is that, I don't know. Like, okay, if that's you, that's fine. But for me, it's more like, I just have this innate need to like, create and explore and like say like mm -hmm. what if and it's the what if and the imagination piece that really excites me and then an idea may linger in my head and it may mm -hmm. sit there for days or weeks or months or years and I'm like finally I'll write it like, like because mm -hmm. I like I can't shake the idea of like what would this world be or what would this character be like but I'm not hearing like whole conversations <laughs> I'm like yeah that might be it. That like me to adjust your meds a little bit. Right. Yeah, guy, like, just saying. <laughs> yeah. I've always like people are like, oh, yes, no, these characters demanded to be written. I was like, wow, that that'd be kind of nice. Like, that'd right. be cool. Like, if you guys could show up where those guys want to stop on by here, uh, that'd be cool because I could use a little oomph. But uh, no. All right. I got to go get you. Um, and I think it's important to remember that it's different for everybody. So when you hear someone say, oh, yes, no, I write because I am compelled to by this great, you know, these things come to me and I must let them out. And you're like, eh, that's not really me. You're not, it doesn't mean that you're not a writer or you're not as valid as someone who says that. You know, everyone's experience is different and it's also different over time. You know, that person's having this experience now. In five years, it might be totally different. Yeah. So... It, you know, compare and despair, baby. I write because it's cheaper than therapy. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, I do. And in seriousness, like, I do find myself grappling with questions or mm -hmm. issues that I see in reality that I can't make sense of. And that goes into my fiction often. Like, I may end up with a character that's similar, or I may end up dealing with a societal problem. I was a political science uh, a student and major and so I love politics and I love understanding societies and how societies mm -hmm. form and the way in which we govern and rule ourselves and so that often seeps into almost everything I write even if it's not a, like a drama like an, especially in fantasy and science fiction and so oh, yeah there is a I feel like there is is a sense of control that you can get from writing because you can create justice where you don't see it in the real world. You can create sense where you see like sort of may mayhem or chaos. You can start to explore reasons why things might exist. Um, and I think it's, it's human nature to always want to like uncover truths or mm -hmm. make everything rationalized, <laughs> even when it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So another reason, good reason, right? Yeah. Is to work through stuff. That's a really great way of putting it if, of, of I, I need to I need to explore this I need to make it right and, and yeah control boy oh boy I like that a lot right <laughs> to say let's let's idealize this let's let's make a world where where the thing that happened I mean dude mysteries are all that mysteries are all that is is let's get control back let's get justice in a in an unjust world yep um yeah that's it feels good okay so so bad reasons to write uh bad reasons to write uh, because you feel like you're supposed to. Uh, you feel like you're you. If you don't, you're bad. Um. Uh, let's see. Things like that. Whenever you're you're coming to it from a negative place, which as someone with ADHD, some that that can happen quite a bit because you know when when the dopamine's down, uh, and you can't bring up the oomph to do a thing, which happens, right? If your dopamine levels go down. The dopamine is what makes you do stuff, makes you like want to do stuff mm -hmm. in, in some ways. And when the dopamine's down, which is what ADHD is, uh, it, it can be impossible to just like, just go, get up, just get up, just get up, go, get up. And, it, you know, it's very easy to get negative. I mean, imagine if you were talking to someone and asked them to do something and they just ignored you, you know, you'd get kind of mad at them. <laughs> like, could you please? And that's, you kind of do that to yourself. And it's an easy trap to fall into, one that I have absolutely fallen into and uh, will continue to do so probably. But it's good to remember that if you come to it with a negative perspective, it, like, it, it's not going to work better. You don't need to beat it yourself up. Yeah. And I think that that gets intensified when 
you have hard external deadlines, right? Like if somebody is paying you to, yeah. you know, publish your next book and you're, you know, brushing up against that deadline and then feeling that low dopamine and you're not, in, you can't, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. That can just intensify and it, it gives those voices of like already doubt and criticism even more fuel to like, yeah pull away at you and, and just create a, a negative sort of shame spiral. And um, I think that's, that's why so many people like end up falling into like these negative vices because like you're trying to quell like all of those emotions of like, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. All the internal criticism, all of the shame, all of the guilt and frustration for not being in a place where you can write uh, mm -hmm. And then barreling down and like, I'm letting down other people. It can be a really tough yeah. position to be in. It can. It can. And yeah, it's, it, you have to really be, have a light touch. And sometimes it, you, he's like, I don't have time to have a light touch, but you still have to have a light touch. You gotta be kind of a ninja uh, yeah. in that way, you know, just like keep your cool, stay there, stay in the Zen space. Um, and so there's another good reason to write is to write as meditation. Because it can be a very meditative activity. You know, in meditation, you do a lot of, uh, you know, sit and your, your mind wanders and kind of, oh, bring it back. Let's stay in the moment. Let's stay here. You know, maybe this is uncomfortable. Maybe this is weird, but we're just going to sit here with it and we're going to, you know, remain in this space. You have to be kind of open to whatever comes along. And writing is absolutely that. So you can think of writing as meditation. And when your attention starts to wander, you know, kind of bring it back like the, you know, like a puppy onto the onto the paper, like they always say, your puppy wanders off, you just bring it back. Um, and so, yeah, writing can be very meditative. Uh, if you do the, the uh, what's that called? The artist's way. Yes. They do the morning pages. Yep. That's basically meditation. Yeah. That cramps your wrist. Um, <laughs> or my wrist, I don't know. Did you ever no, do those? I did, and it does. <laughs> Handwriting those yeah. pages, yeah. <laughs> I lost patience. And like, you read the thing, like, it changed my life. It was so great. Like, Oh, I want that. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'm like, I can't feel my fingers. <laughs> I lost patience with those so fast. Yeah. It was, so, I found it helpful though. I think it, it's helpful because it, for folks who haven't done the morning pages or read The Artist's Way. Oh yeah. Uh, you you know, her whole philosophy is that you do three pages, three full pages of just sort of like brain dump. Like you don't have any kind of preconce preconceived notion of what's going to show up. You don't, it, you're not showing them to people. Uh, I find that most people end up doing personal sort of things and it's not really even connected to like a story or um, mm -hmm. work like that, but you're just getting stuff out of your head and off of your shoulders and onto a page and it's for nobody else. And it can be really therapeutic because a lot of stuff that blocks us is life, right? It's just like all mm -hmm. of the other things that are going on. And sometimes when you get in a habit of clearing all of that out, then you're like, oh, now I have the mental energy and the mental load to actually think about creating or writing. I wish that worked for me. <laughs> that would be really good. But no, all that happened was uh, I was going, well, what? I don't know. I don't know what to say. Just, I, 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 I would just bitch about my day. That's, it was just me that's just complaining. <laughs> that's, I know, but I didn't right. like it. I was like, but then I would end be like, well, now I just feel bad because I just complained. Like, ah, it didn't. It wasn't. You know what? Everyone's got their own path. Yeah. And we all find our own way and this is just not mine but you have uh, to find the right thing to slay the internal critic and everybody's yeah. internal critic is fueled by different things exactly and one of them is remembering your reasons to write which can be as uh as as compelling as there are characters literally in my brain speaking to me and if i don't write the things down i will be driven mad by their constant droning uh or it could be this is fun I got, I, I want to, I liked the clickety clack sound. <laughs> <laughs> a like I, ASMR. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little tick, 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 tick. I have a, a friend, actually, uh, David Abzug, our, our guest from, uh, from last episode, which was a while ago. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, he's got a mechanical keyboard. It's chunka, 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 chunka. Um, and, uh, you might've actually heard it in the audio, uh, cause it's just, but he likes it. Like, yeah, I feel like I'm doing something. Right. So, you know. If that's what makes you happy, whatever works, man. But I, I, for me, I think the thing that's really keeps that I have to keep remembering is that moment of discovery, like the play, the let's see what happens. I don't know. Let's, see, let's figure this out and taking the pressure off and taking the the uh, expectations off and just kind of going in and saying, I, I don't know. I'm just gonna kind of 
even when you're working on something, even when you have like a specific goal and a specific deadline to kind of come to it with an attitude of, let's see what I come up with this time. Yeah. Curiosity. Be, be curious, not judgmental. Um, that can, that can really help. Yeah. One of the things that I've, I've been in a little bit of a, a writing slump where I've been creating and generating a lot of different ideas and doing world building and just character development, but I hadn't been actually producing pages of any mm -hmm. kind of uh, <laughs> tangible project. Nice. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's always fun. And again, but even that act can, can get in your head and you're like, but I'm still not, that's not the thing that I'm supposed to be doing. So therefore I'm yeah. not all, I discount everything that I've been doing. Um, and I have to stop doing that. Don't do that. <laughs> but yeah. I, the way that I got through that was by doing what my friend calls as like concept pages. Uh, and so like I'm working on a script and I'm in the software and, and it looks like a script, but I really have no outline and you know, I love an outline. I have no outline. Mm -hmm. I just have these characters and a faint idea of the world. And I just play, like I just write random scenes with these characters in mm -hmm. worlds and I'm just trying to do a Mary <laughs> like, yeah. and like figure out like who are these characters and what are they doing and where are they drawn to as I play with them in the scenes and like, do I like that scene? Maybe I do. And that's worth keeping or maybe, nope, that one's going to go away. And at the end of this, I'm doing this during NaNoWriMo, so I'm just working on it every day. But at the end of the month, I'll probably have a hundred and some pages of something that is not a completed script. <laughs> it's just a bunch of scenes. And, and that's okay. But you'll something will come out of that. Yeah. It's, it's like the seeds. It's like, that's what I needed to get to the next step because it was too intimidating for me to get into the outlining yeah. at this stage. It's, it's something that it's a genre that I'm not familiar with. It's a like scale that I'm not mm -hmm. familiar with. And I just needed the space to practice and play and uncover things. And that's still productive as is watching TV or playing a video game or D and D like all of those things are also really helpful to your writing. And so I wouldn't mm -hmm. discount that if you're feeling like I actually can't write right now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like when we were kids and we'd play with Barbie dolls and right. We'd have all these scenarios that would happen, right? Like easy, like nothing. You're like, Oh yeah, duh, I'm coming here. I'm going to work. La la la. Da, 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 da. You know, you just play. And you never thought anything of it, right? And there was no like, oh, is this going to be like you just did it? And that I think that's the same vibe of just like, well, let's let's just come up, let's just play with these characters, let's play with these little Barbie dolls, or whatever dolls you want. I, do people don't think they have Barbie dolls anymore? Well, they do. Yeah, anyway. they do. <laughs> we would do our, we would do our stuffed animals. Our stuffed animals all had specific uh, characters and and uh, speech impediments, and we would, you know, have them do different scenarios. And that's you know, that's what you're doing. You're creating your own little Barbie dolls and having them play, and then figuring out who they are i think and, that's uh, that's funny because my first written thing that i remember was a like scripted out soap opera for barbie dolls see? that i made like all of my cousins follow because i i was too much of a control freak and i didn't mm -hmm. like the like impromptu like hey i have the storyline and you're not following it so it was that's like awesome. i wrote out a script for them <laughs> yeah that, that tracks. That makes a lot of sense. That, that tells me a lot. That explains a lot right there. I am there. a Virgo. I like. <laughs> See? That's it. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So I think a good reason to write is because it's fun. Yeah. And if it's not fun, yeah, find a way to make it fun. Right. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Or do something else for a little bit. Yeah. It's okay to take a break. Mm-hmm. And if it's really not fun, like it's never fun, why, why, why are you doing it? Like, why bother? Like, it's, you know, like if it's every time you go right and it's like, ah, oh, this is hell, this is torture, this is pain. Like, maybe, maybe cross stitch, man. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, painting, you know, this, is, yeah, life's too short, man. It is. It's too I, short. I am, I am of that camp now too. Like if, if you don't love it, just stop doing it. It's okay. You don't have to yeah. explain it to anyone. You don't have to apologize or feel guilty. You're, you're still a valid person. Yeah, you're we'll still, still like you're, you. It's, and it wasn't a waste. It, what you yeah. did wasn't a waste. You know, it's all, it's fine. Yeah. Cool. Well, now that we've talked to everyone out of writing, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess we should just uh, wrap up. Uh, last, all the other things to say, just kind of as 
business is um, if you can uh, rate and subscribe and smash the like button and all those things that people do to to uh, make podcasts more visible, we would really appreciate that. Or if there's someone else you know who is also a writer who you think would enjoy it, uh, let them know about it because it would really, uh, it's kind of word of mouth is how these things get uh, get going. Yes, please and thank you. All manners. That's not, yes, thank you. I forgot my manners. All right. Well, I do remember how our show ends, so I will do it that way. So remember that writing is hard. So take it easy. I'm Mary. And I'm Melissa. Bye, everybody. 